Welcome to a video from TheDigitalLifestyle.com and this video we're going to be looking at this Acer Nitro 5 gaming laptop. This is probably more of a game, a budget gaming laptop because gaming laptops can be quite expensive. This is around 800 quid. So in this video I'm going to look at the specs, um, the keyboard, the screen, a little bit of what it's like for gaming performance and uh, I'm going to try Windows Mixed Reality as well to see how it handles that. So first let me give you the specs, it's the um, i5 version, 7300HQ processor, 8GB of RAM, 1TB hard drive and 128GB uh, SSD, so Windows can go on the SSD, which is important. For the gaming side, and importantly for Windows Mixed Reality, it's got an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1050 with 2GB of RAM. And it's running to Windows 10 gaming. Let's have a quick look at the physical design. It's got a uh, 1080 screen. It's not glossy, it's quite a, quite a matte finish. Uh, I quite like the glossy screens, but this is a very matte finish. It's not particularly um, high res, so we're running at 1920 by 1080, but that's that's good for gaming. Um, I prefer some of the, the, sort of the high res screens that are coming out now, but for gaming that's, that's, uh, that's pretty good. And it's also good for, um, you know, if you want to use Windows and everything else. So good, a good screen. Good colour reproduction, so not too, too high res, but good colour reproduction. This is a little bit flat, I would say. You know, the reds aren't don't really pop, but uh, it's not bad. It's uh, it's good for that. As you can see, it's got a backlit keyboard, and for gamers, it, it's got um, the highlighted. I don't know if the camera really picks this up. Yeah, the hi highlighted WASD keys on there for gaming. They're not actually any physically any different. It's just got that sort of bold outline on it as well. There's a number pad as well, uh, which is good, and a large trackpad with uh, a precision trackpad on there as well. The keys are good for typing. It does a bit of movement on there, not too much. One of pet hates is when you get some of the budget ones and you go like that, it sinks in. This is not too bad. It's very responsive. Um, there's a short amount of travel, but you know, no problem writing on this and certainly no problem uh, gaming on this as well. It's got this sort of matte, uh, this uh, glossy um, finish to it. So it does pick up fingerprints a little bit and it's on the back here we've got this sort of Ace and Nitro bar and the and the vents on there. So I quite like the design. It's fairly heavy. Let me see if I can find the exact weight. 2.7 kilograms. So it's fairly heavy and quite thick. But you want for a gaming machine, you want a chunky, a chunky laptop. It's not just games, but entertainment as well. Let's look at the, some of the ports. We've got as well as the Kensington lot. We've got um, dedicated Ethernet port, USB-C, full-size HDMI, USB-3, full-size SD card reader. These two are quite handy together like that if you're doing a bit of uh, mixed reality because many of the uh, VR headsets like the Windows Mixed Reality have a, a cable with a split that has, requires both of those so you want those next to each other. On the other side we've got two standard USB 2 ports, headphone and the, the power adapter. This has got some really good speakers on it as well. Speakers here at the front, so they're not blocked out when you put the, the laptop down, with really good stereo separation. So that's on fairly quiet now. I'm going to turn it up and I'll turn it back down so I can talk again. Nice and loud. And a good, like I said, good stereo separation and a reasonable amount of bass on there. So, um, good sound reproduction for gaming, definitely um, a big for playing games on there. Right, let me give some of the spec now. So, we've got i5 processor in there. I said the i7 version is available, it's a bit more expensive. Um, probably the, the graphics card is the most important thing when you're doing mixed reality. So, um, the i7 i5 processor doesn't make too much of a difference. We've got 8 gig of RAM and like I said, I've got two drives on here. So the Windows is stored on the SSD drive, so it's very responsive, nice and fast, opening things and closing applications very quickly. Um, its performance is really good. There's no wait for anything on this. Everything just opens. And that's because Windows is on the uh, solid state drive. The other part, the other storage you can use for storing 
you store media on there, your, your, your game saves and whatever. So you've got um, plenty of space on there. This has got a lot of stuff installed and the drive is getting full, but it's got 118 gig on there. So really, there's plenty of um, there's plenty of space for Windows and the operating system. I would recommend putting your, your game saves and media on that. This review model has got everything on the C drive, so it's getting a bit full, but uh, it's easy to get rid of some stuff there and move it over to, to the other drive. So I've got 8 gig of RAM, plenty of RAM for uh, for Windows. Makes That's one of the reasons why Windows works so well, is because it's, so, it's nice and fast and snappy. So now I'm going to give... Windows Mixed Reality test. I've got the Acer Mixed Reality headset uh, ready and the two controllers. If you're interested in Mixed Reality uh, headset, I have a separate review of that which you can find on our YouTube channel, phenologicallifestyle.com. Before I even uh, fire up Windows Mixed Reality on this, I'm going to use this PC compatibility app to check to see whether this machine will run Windows Mixed Reality. I'm pretty sure it will, but let's give it a test anyway. So here you can see the results. So it's got the full creators update. It's got the GTX 1050, which all these run with the tick. It's got the right drivers, CPU, RAM, disk space, and everything else. So what this means is this will be good for Windows Mixed Reality Ultra. So you'll get the highest frame rate, the 90 hertz refresh rate. You get uh, the mirroring mode and all the other features of Windows Mixed Reality. Everything's going to run on here. So let's fire up Windows Mixed Reality. Okay, so what you're seeing here is a mirror of what I see with the Mixed Reality headset. So here I am with the headset on now, but I'll show you what I can see on the screen. So I'll fire a game up now so we can give that a test. This is a Ghostbusters game that's actually included uh, with the Acer headset. So, I've been trying a few different games on here. Very smooth, refresh rate, everything is smooth, there's no lags. It looks really good, so running Windows Mixed Reality games is uh, no problem on this. You can try something like this Ghostbusters game or a little bit more adventurous stuff in there as well. Hollow Tour, all these kind of things, they all work flawlessly with the, with the headset on. Minecraft is another good example. You can go into Minecraft and walk around your Minecraft creations using... Um, using the headset so this is very good for Windows Mixed Reality. What about Steam? So with Steam VR I do get a bit of uh, flickering as you can see that effect. Um, Steam doesn't seem to be as efficient as Windows Mixed Reality is so uh, your mileage wave area as they say with with Steam so you can see it's a bit jerky on here uh, but then some things like uh, Google Earth work absolutely perfectly so it's, the Steam environment may be a bit laggy, but it depends on the games. So, um, I've got a Rick and Morty game, and that is a bit jerky. But like I said, um, Google Earth absolutely works brilliantly. So, it really does depend on the Steam game. So, I'm going to give 3D Mark a try. This is a nice, consistent way of, uh, of benchmarking without having to uh, try all different games. So... So that score 1855 and I'm guessing that the limitation on this is probably the um, the i5 processor. It doesn't support hyperthreading and uh, that's probably the, the biggest limitation. The good side on this is you've got the GTX 1050 uh, so giving you plenty of uh, GPU power. So I think this is going to be good for um, Gaming on sort of medium frame rates, um, medium qualities, it's not going to get your highest end qualities but uh, it is for the price of it I think um, it is a good a, a good gaming machine. Right, some other things we can discuss. Uh, we'll check battery life, I had this on charge so we'll see how much how that works. I do like this keyboard, this backlit keyboard, I think um, it looks really nice with the game keys highlighted there. Trackpad's pretty good as well. It's got a good screen on there, it's good for gaming, it's good for VR. Um, it's certainly good with Windows Mixed Reality and Steam. The higher end Steam stuff not as good but the, the things I tried out with Windows Mixed Reality worked really well. Not the best benchmarks I've seen. I let down a bit by that, I guess, on the processor, but like I said before, a good good price. So it's a good entry level gaming machine, really. I mean, your gaming laptops you can pay a couple of grand for, this is under 800 quid, 
and if you need the higher spec processor then you could go for the i7 version of it. Comes to battery life, not so good. Um, I'm getting what remaining here two hours five minutes on 85% so uh, you're probably getting three to four hours battery but this really isn't a um, a portable machine that you want to use all day carrying around with you it's a gaming machine but what you can what it is really good with combine it with the mixed reality and you've got a portable mixed reality uh, system so you can take this around with you use any room with mixed reality good thing about Windows mixed reality you don't need uh, cameras set up anywhere so you can really take this with you take plug it in and you've got a good complete mixed reality rig so it's great for that ideal for getting started in windows mixed reality so uh, more details on the thanks for watching this video